Um, Sunaina, Bupesh, thank you both of you for sharing with us your uh, you know in-depth presentation. Uh, quite a few interesting takeaways, Bupesh. First, if I could you know start off with you, because one has seen like you made the point in your presentation as well that in two years the markets, both equity as well as fixed income have had to deal with everything starting off from COVID to war now. But at least, you know, for the equity markets, I can say that they have clearly climbed the wall of worry, right? In our lifetimes, we never thought that we we're going to see such unprecedented times. We've really, you know, been to the dumps and back and recovered extremely strong. We wanted to understand from here, because the dynamics from when COVID struck us two years back to now are very, very different. How do you now see, um, you know, with crude at 130, now settling sub 100, the impact of the ongoings across the globe right now, both on the Indian economy as well as the Indian markets. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, you know, markets you know, deal with a number of factors. And mm -hmm. one important factor of equity markets is uh, where growth is. Uh, for bond markets, you know, inflation becomes very important. Now, uh, just look at the, this uh, current uh, crisis that we're having, the Ukraine crisis, and before the, the, this uh, COVID recession. Now, you know, the important point to note here is that for the, for the last two years, what we saw was that growth was, had fallen significantly, but markets were doing very good. I mean, uh, both the bond market were quite happy, equity market were booming across the world, and people were very confused what's happening. I mean, why growth is so bad, why are markets doing so good? Uh, the, the key reason I would say, uh, with hindsight, uh, we can say for sure, but at that time also we conjectured that was, you know, this extraordinary policy stimulus which had come from uh, both the central bankers and from the fiscal side. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that uh, when you, whenever you give so much money into the market, there's always a payback time. And now because of this very extraordinary stimulus, we are dealing with a lot of inflation around the world. And now, while growth is improving pretty much across the board, you look at the US data, European data, despite this, uh, you know, COVID crisis, I mean, this Ukraine crisis, also in Indian data, the economy is improving pretty much across the board. But because, you know, we had given earlier a lot of money to people and things have become overheated. So both the central bankers and I would also guess you know, the fiscal side also, people are stepping back from the stimulus. And what it will result in is that while people will again be quite confused to what is happening. Why is it that economies are doing good, but markets are turning certain, turning volatile. So that's the one thing which we need to deal with. Uh, what we need to remember that over the last 20 years, I would say, um, uh, every time, you know, there was a different paradigm. Uh, central bankers were always there. Uh, the, cent the classic central banker put was there pretty much, pretty much across the board. Bad data was supposed to be good data. The entire paradigm is making a lot of big shift. Uh, Every month they are getting super high inflation and central bankers now believe that they are behind the curve and a big fast catch up is taking place. So I think to do good in markets right now, uh, only two people will do good. I would say uh, one who don't have uh, any historical baggage with them or what's happened in the last 20 years or the second group would be those who have this baggage over the last 40 years where it's seen different cycles. So that's what I want to say is that we are, we are entered a new paradigm. And the learning of the last 20 years aren't going to help you in the next, I would say, 10 years at least. So be prepared for that. Uh, overall outlook for economy looks pretty good. Uh, but for equity markets, brace for some volatility. I would say same for uh, bond markets also. They will be through the volatile time. But again, you will always find places where you can invest and you know, get a decent return. Sure. And I think a lot of this, it is going to actually become clearer tomorrow when you have the RBI policy. The Fed has already moved. And I think now all eyes are on the Reserve Bank of India, whether they're going to bite the bullet or not. Uh, but Sinan, if I could get you in on the discussion, purely on the credit growth side of things, uh, it's been rather tepid if one can describe it that way. Is this a demand or a supply side issue? What's been your observation? So I think it's a mix of both, you know, supply has been fairly low and that's because, you know, a lot of the issuers actually are sitting on a fair amount of cash, use the buoyancy in equity market to actually raise uh, equity and deliver their balance sheet. So they've actually not really gone out and raised much money. A little bit of this may be also because of fear in promoters. They've seen, you know, in the last couple of years, 
uh, quite a few uh, fellow promoters, uh, companies and groups going to NCLT and the, you know, the dangers of being over levered. So, you know, uh, from some, to some extent, it's a supply issue. Uh, demand has actually is there because, you know, all lenders, be it, uh, you know, the NBFCs, be it the, uh, the bankers, you know, they're actually sitting on fair amount of liquidity, uh, fairly cleaned up balance sheets, particularly the banks over the last few years. But most of them have gone and chased the high quality assets. You know, they also have a little bit of the past uh, hanging over their heads uh, in terms of, you know, when assets go bad, uh, you know, the kind of repercussions that can happen on their managements. So you, it is a little bit of a demand and supply side issue. We have, however, started seeing some uptick in credit growth uh, and with CapEx plans being announced uh, by companies, hopefully the animal spirits return, hopefully the, uh, you know, the, the, the virtuous cycle of credit restarts. Sure. You know, Bupesh, looking at how equity markets have panned out in the last two years to the kind of scenario that we're currently at and tomorrow, in all likelihood, we are going to see the beginning of the interest rate cycle actually change here in India as well. Does fixed in income investment even make sense or should one really sort of stick to equity in this rising interest rate scenario? So, I mean, two points here. One is uh, in terms of asset allocation, we always sure. you know, recommend to investors that you should always have some allocation to fixed income, some to equity, gold, etc. It's typically a negative correlation between uh, fixed income and equity. So typically when good growth has fallen significantly, fixed income gives good return. So that's point number one, the uh, asset allocation part, where fixed income should always be a part. Uh, second and most importantly, as I discussed in the presentation also, uh, you know, uh, so they are like, three sources of return that you get in fixed income. One is the YTM, the carry part. Uh, second is the capital gain parts, which is that, you know, when bond yields go up, you get a capital loss and vice versa. And the third is the roll down part, which is, you know, if yields are very steep and you've invested in a three year paper in one year time, it will become a two year paper. And because yield curve is very steep, so you get a roll down benefit because you know, effective interest rate for you have gone down. So one thing to note is that first is that yield curve currently are extraordinarily steep. So if you are at least at about four or five year uh, point, uh, both in the GSEC curve and SGL curve and also in the corporate bond curve. So if you are, you know, depending on your horizon of investing, if you are suitably placed in the yield curve uh, in a somewhat quasi passive way and let the yield curve roll down and, uh, you know, and roll down the yield curve and get benefit out of that, you will still get a decent return. We have been advocating this strategy since last one year. And you know, in a scenario, if you compare, you know, uh, in the last one year, uh, 10 year GSEC went up from 580 to 680. Uh, repo rate was extremely low, but even in that scenario, you know, good, I mean, all these roll down studies have given pretty decent return, 6% plus return. So a lot of decent return you have got despite this rising yields, uh, because of these benefits. That's point number one. And point number two, more importantly, is that they, they've discussed the actual return that you get in fixed income is a function of not what is there, uh, what is going to be the rate hike cycle or rate cut cycle, but what all is already factored in the prices. So, you know, markets are like discounting machine. If markets have already discounted that there's going to be a rate hike cycle and rate hike cycle turns out to be lesser than what markets have discounted, you will still do much better than you are sitting in cash. And because markets are already factoring in 200 basis point rate hike, if you're going to swap curve over the last next one year, and most likely are they not going to hike that much. Uh, so in most scenarios, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, you can, you can play with, uh, I think fixed income still make a lot of sense to invest. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, so Nana, the conversation is not going to be complete before no, knowing what your, uh, you know, tilt towards uh, the market is. What are the sectors that you think are going to outperform and which are the ones you think are going to underperform from here? So, you know, I think, uh, you know, as I was discussing earlier, credit health in India is doing extremely well. We're probably best placed. And when I'm saying credit health, I'm talking about the organized players, the ones where, you know, investment grade where mutual funds would actually invest. So across the board, actually, uh, you know, from a health perspective or an underwriting perspective, you're spoiled for choice. Uh, a lot of sectors doing extremely well. Uh, I would be a little cautious about sectors which are more contact oriented uh, because, uh, you know, you never know when there is another resurgence of a COVID wave, etc. And also at the bottom of the pyramid of both the uh, household balance sheet as well as the corporate balance sheet. So, you know, uh, that's where you would, you would, uh, you know, be a little careful. <laughs> 
Uh, however, you know, you don't expect any nasty surprise from that either because, you know, all the NBFCs which cater to those segments are extremely well capitalized and leverage is low. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, good companies and good sectors to go there and pick from. Uh, the, uh, the challenge, of course, remains on, on copper bond spreads. Uh, the triple A spreads, double A spreads, single A spreads are at all time lows. And, you know, uh, that's where the, the challenge still remains. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bupesh, as well as, um, right, Bupesh, Sunena, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us. I can already see our uh, next panelist waiting by. Uh, Sumit, over to you.